Welcome to a world where shadows come to life and every creak of the floor sends chills down your spine. Before we dive into tonight's tale, make sure to grab your headphones and find a cozy spot. The eerie whispers and unsettling sounds are best experienced up close, and listening through headphones will make every spine-tingling detail come alive. As darkness falls and you prepare for sleep, let our story wrap you in its chilling embrace. Are you ready to face your fears? Close your eyes, and let the terror begin. This incident occurred during the summer of 2016. For some context, my parents frequently went on vacation, leaving me alone at home for two weeks to look after our dogs and maintain the garden. Although I was generally nervous due to past experiences of being followed home a few times, I felt relatively safe with our four large dogs and the secure environment of our home. Our neighborhood was still new and surrounded by forest, and while I occasionally saw unsavory characters, nothing serious had happened before. Most of our neighbors were friends of my dad, which added to my sense of security, and our house was enclosed by a tall fence with spikes on top, making it nearly impossible to climb over without injury. The first few days went by without incident, except for some thuds in the garden, which I attributed to Martin's messing around with my mom's flowers. My dogs had become accustomed to these noises and ignored them. However, after a couple of days, I needed to go to the shops. Because I was busy during the day, I ended up going in the evening as it was getting dark, an ill-advised decision. While walking home, I noticed a man who had been sitting on a bench get up and follow me. I initially thought he might be from the neighborhood and heading in the same direction. When I reached the main road near my house, the man was still following me, and I realized he wasn't a neighbor. As I reached the final turn to my house and he was still behind me, I began to feel very uneasy. Fortunately, my neighbor, who lived to the left of my house, was outside watering his plants and saw me. He noticed I looked stressed and knew my parents were out of town. When the man following me saw my neighbor, he quickly fled back toward the forest. I immediately called my parents, who reassured me that everything was fine and that our neighborhood was safe. They reminded me that I had the dogs with me and advised me to stay calm. For context, when my parents were away, I slept in their downstairs bedroom to prevent the dogs from going upstairs in the dark and potentially hurting themselves. That night, while reading a book in bed, my dogs were sound asleep on the floor around the bed. They must have sensed my distress because they began to growl at the window. Suddenly, I heard a thud against the window in the next room, followed by another thud at the window in my bedroom. I started to panic but tried to stay calm. The third thud was louder, and it became clear that someone was banging on every window of the house. I was crying, realizing what was happening. I left my bedroom and went to the center of the house where I could see the main door. I saw a dark figure outside peeking through the window and banging on the small window of the main door. I hid under the table and called my dad, but he didn't answer as it was around 2 a.m., and they were on vacation. I tried calling twice more until my mom answered, confused by the late-night call. By then, the man was trying to force open the door. My mom could hear the commotion through the phone, and my dad urgently contacted everyone he could, including his brother, my neighbors, and my grandma, to get help quickly. My neighbor, who had talked to me earlier that day, was the first to arrive and scared the man away. The intruder fled into my backyard, but I was too frightened to open the main door. About ten minutes later, my uncle, aunt, and grandma arrived. 
My uncle had a key and opened the door, letting the dogs out to chase the intruder. As hunting dogs, they weren't friendly to strangers. My uncle and neighbor then went into the backyard with flashlights and the dogs to ensure the area was safe. I will never forget how my grandma and aunt comforted me while I was crying and clutching a chair. The intruder had escaped through the back of the garden into my other neighbor's yard, probably trying to evade the dogs. He managed to damage the small window in the main door, cracking the glass and loosening the door on its hinges. I shudder to think what might have happened if they hadn't arrived so quickly. Normally, I don't share this story because people either become uneasy or offer advice on what I should have done differently. They don't realize that in a state of complete panic, your mind doesn't work the same way. It's not as simple as making quick decisions or thinking clearly, which is something many people don't fully understand. This incident took place around five years ago when I was living in a nice apartment in downtown Memphis, working as an IT technician. I came home from work at my usual time, around 4.30 p.m., unlocked the door, and went inside. I put my phone, wallet, and keys on the kitchen counter, and heard the heavy front door slam shut behind me as I began doing chores around the house. Growing up in a small town, I was accustomed to not locking my door during the day, especially with my husband expected home soon. However, since that day, I've never forgotten to lock my door. That evening, as I was hanging up laundry in my walk-in closet, I heard the front door open. I assumed it was my husband coming home early and called out, I'm in here, love. When there was no response, I began to feel uneasy, trying to dismiss the feeling. I walked out into the living room and saw an unfamiliar man standing on the other side of the kitchen island. He looked to be in his fifties, but I couldn't remember his exact features due to my shock. He stood there, blankly staring. We were about 12 to 15 feet apart, so I thought I could grab the laptop and run before he could catch me. As I picked it up and turned to run, I saw him moving toward me. I sprinted back to the bathroom, the only place with two locked doors between us. I slammed the bathroom door shut and locked it, then quickly ran into the closet and locked that door as well. I opened my laptop, accessed Facebook Messenger, and began sending messages to my husband, asking him to call 911 and inform them about the intruder. Fortunately, he received my messages within minutes, assured me he had called 911, and was leaving work to help if he could. While I felt some relief, I was still anxious. Suddenly. I heard the bathroom door creak open and the intruder began pounding on the closet door. People often suggest what I should have done differently, but in reality, I was paralyzed with fear and shock. I didn't scream, cry, or look for a weapon in the dark closet, nor did I try to brace the door. Some people think that since I lived in an apartment, someone would have heard me scream and come to help. They wonder why I didn't use anything heavy in the closet for defense. I don't have a good answer for that, 
but somehow the closet door held in the summer of 2016. To give some context, my parents frequently went on vacation, leaving me alone at home for two weeks to take care of our dogs in the garden. Although I was always a bit anxious due to past experiences of being followed home, I generally felt safe because my neighborhood was still new, surrounded by forest, and my house was protected by a tall fence with spikes on top. My neighbors were mostly friends of my dad's, which added to my sense of security. In the beginning, everything was fine. The first few days were uneventful, except for some noises in the garden, which I attributed to Martin messing with my mom's flowers. My dogs had grown accustomed to these sounds and paid no attention to them. However, after two days, I had to go to the shops in the evening, as I had been busy all day. It was starting to get dark, and I know now it wasn't the best idea. As I walked home along my usual path, a busy route because people walked their dogs there and it resembled a mix of a park and a forest, I noticed a man I had just passed standing up from a bench and following me. Initially, I thought he might be a neighbor or someone heading in the same direction. But as I exited the forest onto a regular road lined with houses, I realized he wasn't familiar, and my anxiety grew. Fortunately, my neighbor, who lives to the left of my house, was outside watering his plants and saw me. He noticed my stress and knew my parents were out of town. When the man following me saw my neighbor, he quickly retreated into the forest. I called my parents, who reassured me that everything was fine and that the neighborhood was safe. I tried to calm down and continue as usual. For context, when my parents were away, I slept in their downstairs bedroom to prevent my dogs from navigating the stairs in the dark. That night, while reading a book, I heard a thud from outside, which I initially dismissed as Martin's interference. However, my dog began growling at the bedroom window, and soon there were more thuds, this time on the bedroom window itself. I started to panic, though I tried to stay calm. The third thud was louder, and it became clear someone was banging on every window of the house. Crying, I moved to the center of the house where I could see the main door. From my hiding spot under a table, I saw a dark figure outside the door, peeking inside and banging on a small window. I called my dad, but he didn't answer. It was about 2 a.m., and they were on vacation. After several calls, my mom finally answered and heard the commotion. My dad urgently contacted everyone who could help, his brother, my neighbors, my grandma. My neighbor from earlier that day was the first to arrive and scared the intruder away. The intruder fled to my backyard but I was too terrified to open the door. About 10 minutes later, my uncle, aunt, and grandma arrived. My uncle used the key to let the dogs out, and they chased the intruder. My uncle and neighbor, with flashlights and the dogs, checked the backyard to ensure it was safe. I will never forget how my grandma and aunt comforted me while I cried, clutching a chair. The intruder had managed to damage the small window in the main door, cracking the glass and loosening the door on its hinges. I shudder to think what might have happened if they hadn't arrived so quickly. Normally, I don't share this story as people either get uneasy or offer advice on what I should have done. They don't understand that panic doesn't allow for quick decisions or clear thinking. Fast forward to about five years ago, when I was living in a downtown Memphis apartment and working as an IT technician. After coming home from work one day, I unlocked my door and went inside, placing my phone, wallet, 
and keys on the kitchen counter. I heard the heavy door slam shut behind me and began doing chores. Growing up in a small town, I was accustomed to not locking the door during the day, especially since my husband would be home soon. But that day, I realized I had been too lax. As I walked into my large walk-in closet to hang up some laundry, I heard the front door open. Thinking it was my husband, I called out, but when there was no response, I felt uneasy. I found a man I didn't know standing on the other side of the kitchen island. He appeared to be in his fifties, but I was too shocked to recall details. He just stood there, watching me silently, which was unsettling. I thought he might have mistakenly entered the wrong apartment, but his continued silence and presence made me realize I needed to act. I tried to appear. As I waited, I heard the intruder trying to break into the toolbox. Following the dispatcher's advice, I locked the room door and, despite the loud creaks of the floorboards, the intruder eventually left. The police arrived about five minutes later, but they found no trace of the intruder. They believed the intruders had broken in earlier, taken what they could and returned to try to open the toolbox. I stayed up until sunrise and then got a few hours of sleep before my friend's wife came to take me back to get my car. I asked if I could store my tools at their place for safekeeping, and they agreed. The next day, I had Christmas lunch with my dad and his new friends. I also bought new, stronger door locks for my dad's house feeling more secure knowing the house was better protected.